Well, look who's back with us, Senator Ron Johnson from Senate Budget. It's good to see you again, Senator. Talk to us about how you and other lawmakers are asking the Office of Special Counsel to investigate and punish government officials retaliating against IRS whistleblowers on the Hunter Biden case. Well, Elizabeth, well, Senator Grassley, I, together with James Comer and, and Jim Jordan, uh, have written to the Office of Special Counsel and asked them to investigate these allegations of whistleblowing uh, retaliation. You know, I come from the private sector. You know, I've been shocked at how much retaliation occurs from the federal government and how these agency uh, heads and supervisors get away with it. Uh, it. It literally is shocking. In the private sector, we'd be sued out of existence, but because the federal government basically immune, immunizes itself against all these things, it just continues. And of course, under the Biden administration, the last thing they want is whistleblowers to come forward, and so they're doing everything they can to retaliate against them, try and do it on the radar screen, to send a very clear signal against others. If you want to retire with your pension, if you want to continue to get promotions, do not tell Congress or the American people the truth. But Elizabeth, we need more whistleblowers. We need people of integrity that want to restore integrity to their agencies uh, now more than ever. Yeah, it's important. I mean, IRS and government whistleblowers, FBI whistleblowers, uh, we've been hearing about them for some time, that, about the issues under this Biden administration. I mean, it, it, this White House is all about transparency, but then we've got government officials shutting it down by attacking whistleblowers. That's not a good look. No, this White House is all about saying they're for transparency, but doing the exact opposite. This is a lawless administration. I mean, let's face it, uh, President Biden, after in the last session, when the Supreme Court ruled that uh, the uh, moratorium on uh, evicting renters was unconstitutional, he just shrugged his shoulders and said, we're going to continue the, the moratorium. Now he gets a ruling against his student loan forgiveness, and he's already got a, another unconstitutional scheme up his, uh, up his sleeve and announces that the next day. He could not care less about following the Constitution. And this is, a, care less about this is the a man. It's, it's all about power. This is a man who ran Senate Judiciary. He was chair of it. And he's been in D.C. since the Nixon era. Okay, we've got to move on to this. This is about, you know, telling people how to think and what to do. We've had this major setback for the diversity, equity, and inclusion mo movement. Sir, your Democrat governor of your state of Wisconsin, Tony Evers, he just signed a budget effectively defunding DEI and state universities. This is a big amount of money, and they were making nearly $16 million annually at the University of Wisconsin. What do you make of this story? Well, apparently he's going to keep these offices open, though. So, again, he'll circumvent the will of the legislature here in Wisconsin, and he'll continue with this DEI uh, initiative. Now, Elizabeth, I think most Americans embraced Martin Luther King's call to judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Uh, we've made great strides in this country. We ought to celebrate that success, but what's happening on the left, whether it's critical race theory, whether it's DEI, this is their technique of telling their supporters in identity politics that the other side, Republicans hate them so they hate us. They are the ones, Democrats are sowing the division and hate in this country. It's got to end because I think right now the division of this country is the greatest threat we face. Yeah, P the AP says that we're more, more polarized than ever. Pew Research has shown that too. We've been whipsawing back and forth in polarization since the mid-90s. So how does this stop? I mean, how do you bring more transparency under this White House that has routinely misled America, routinely does, continues to this day, even in South Carolina, the president misled America. How do you bring more transparency and keep getting at the truth? Well, we keep digging. Uh, we keep investigating, we keep exposing the truth. Now, I don't know whether you'll ever provide enough evidence for the mainstream media to come clean. I mean, they are complicit, they are compliant, they are corrupt as well. They're a bunch of radical leftists themselves are going to support President Biden. They're the ones that basically installed him in office and are keeping him in office. We just need to keep bringing up more and more evidence. And let's face it, uh, Senator Grassley and I laid out all the evidence we would need to not elect this guy, but the media covered that up. James Comer, Jim Jordan are, are getting more and more details on this, and we're going to probably need, we'll need a smoking gun on Joe Biden before the mainstream media ever opens up its eyes. Got it. Senator Johnson, thanks for joining us tonight. Have a great evening.